I'm going to comment briefly today on what concerns me most about mental health and the COVID-19 pandemic. First, a thought that may occur to many of you is the traumatic stress of the frontline workers. We hear of their stories and we see their pictures and, and some of us are those workers and, and have loved ones who are those workers and we know about the traumatic stress they experience. Second would be, in, in my mind, would be the grief uh, and the traumatic and complicated grief of individuals who've lost loved ones to COVID-19 and they may have been separated from these loved ones in the dying process and have not been able to do what we think of as routine and important bereavement rituals. Third, on a broader stroke, are the vulnerable populations at high risk for mental disorders. This is especially true in communities that have little or no access to mental health treatment, where health inequalities actually existed pre-COVID-19. And we know that there are social determinants of health and mental health that have intersected with the pandemic. So this is actually now also coupled with the mental health risks that are compounded by structural racism. In our field, and when we think of mental health, we're actually worried that mental health disorders will be the second wave of the pandemic. But thinking about different topics, another way of thinking about mental health is the stress, anxiety, depression, and actually loneliness that's experienced as a result of physical distancing and the changes in social support among those of us that have not been previously challenged by mental disorders, but may be during these quarantine and COVID-19 times. So if we think about mental health needs on a continuum, from mental health treatment for acute distress to prevention services for individuals who are typically resilient but are now without their effective coping mechanisms, it gives us a broad range of ways to think about addressing mental health. So the stress also caused by the disruption of our normal routines, like going to work, being able to exercise, maybe traveling, socializing with, socializing with friends, and the changes we have in our living situations and family structures can also create emotional distress that, that we used to be able to handle through coping mechanisms that are not currently available to us. So what I hope is that we prioritize mental health services and research across this continuum. Seeking mental health care and acknowledging mental health issues has, has had a long history of being stigmatized. So given that all of us have been affected by COVID-19, some much more than others, we must include mental health treatment and prevention of disorders in our COVID-19 response, both locally and globally.